Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, everyone, for the technical problem and all that we all have been facing. Anyways, let's go on the topic. So, so some of the things what we are going to try to learn is uh, in our day-to-day -day practice as well, we do come across a lot of pacemaker problems as well and defibrillation, in fact, as well. So what will be happening is sometimes it will be happening, but sometimes even when we want, it may not happen. And a lot of times the other thing is, I know this is a, a academic session. So what happens is even if you will be coming across the exams and all, not just this, there are nowadays exams conducting from the European Society of Cardiology, the ACC as well. There will be definite questions which you should expect it uh, from devices, even uh, the non-invasive diagnosis, the basic EP and pharmacology as well. So the, it is a very important topic as well, and which is going to happen is not just right now, even later on in your future as well, you will be coming across. So these are the topics we'll try to uh, deal with. So what happens is, uh, what shall we try to take information, okay? Whenever we are trying to see, for example, any kind of arrhythmias like this, especially with a pacemaker, we always should try to get as much information as possible. So if possible, try to also do the interrogation as well. Interrogation because it is going to give a lot of information. So what has been the device? What went wrong? What are the things possibly you can do as well, for example, for the device? Okay, so that's why. And then, of course, never forget that how about the chest X-ray? So the, of course, you can do a ECG as well, a chest X-ray as well. So it is going to give you further insights. So what has been happening, in fact, okay? And after that, let's not forget the basics. Basics means is the international code, especially for the pacemaker function. So there are five positions for that. So sometimes uh, it goes like this, like chamber paste, sense, response, then the program function, and then finally is the tachy uh, arrhythmia function. So paste, sense, response, program function, and the special tachy arrhythmia function, okay? So we, if we will try to go through those uh, uh, codes, uh, you know, carefully, then we may be able to notice there are different codes, different codes in the sense like V for ventricle, A for atrium, D for double, or O for, of course, none. Okay? For pacing and sensing. V, A, D, or O. Then, about the mode of response. Mode of response will be triggered, inhibitory, or double response, the R is for reverse. Then comes the program function. As I said, it's chamber sense, oh, pace, sense. So in this, sometimes confusion can happen, uh, you know, which is the pace or sense first. So always remember alphabetically order, P comes first after, before the S. So chamber pace, sense, response, program function, and the special tachyarrhythmia function. So in the mode of response, as I said, it trigger, inhibitory, double, or none. And then comes is the programmable function. Programmable function is what kind of programming can be done. So for example, the, like the rate, the output, and there are a lot of other uh, programs as well, which we will try to give an overview, in fact. And then about the communication. And of course, O is always for the none. Then finally is, if the, the device or senses, what about the tachycardia? So what can uh, it do for the tachyarrhythmia? It can do is B for burst pacing, huh? then N is the normal rate comp competition and S for scanning, okay? And E for external. So that's why it is very, very important. And now we'll try to go to the different um, uh, codes which we right now said about. So one of the important things is, is pacing mode selection. So whenever, uh, what kind of uh, pacing mode selection we should be doing. So we should know if it is an AV block patient, okay? Will you still go for dual chamber pacemaker for such patients? Hmm? 
No. Isn't it? You should not because AV, it is blocked. So atrium is blocked from the ventricle. So you will have to go for a ventricular support, isn't it? And that's what makes sense as well. Then comes the patient of sinus node dysfunction. So sinus node dysfunction in which the node is you know, working well. So what you should be doing, okay? Then comes the neurocardiogenic syncope. So in which you should try to see is there's a rate drop response. So there should be a function of rate drop response as well. And then, yes, if there's a patient with atrial tachyarrhythmia, you should always try to make sure there's a mode switching. Mode switching means, for example, um, when, whenever there is like a atrial fibrillation, what is the use of pacing from the atrium? In fact, a patient of atrial fibrillation try to avoid even putting up a atrial lead. Otherwise, if it is a paroxysmal episode, yes, you can put it, lead can be there. And, but later on, you will have to put it, switch off, in fact, okay? Then comes the transition. So for example, what about the AV interval timeout, okay? Or the VA interval timeout. So AV timeout, interval timeout means, is what is going to happen is, the pacing will be happening in the V, and it is going to start the VAI, pace, sense, response, okay? So pacing will start in V, sensing will happen in A, and response will be inhibitory. Let's not forget, uh, as I had said it, these codes, trigger, inhibitory, double or none response. And the programmable functions, as we already said it, the programmable, multi-programmable, common, Then, how about the VA interval timeout? So a lot of times you'll be coming across VA interval timeout. So it will be happening as opposite. Opposite in the sense, it is going to start pacing in the atrium, right? So similarly comes the V sense during the AVI. AVI, so for example, you notice these modes earlier. VAI, AVI. If there is V sense during the AVI, so what is going to happen is it is going to start VA. So after which there will be no pacing at all. So similarly comes the V sense during VAI. So which is going to restart the VA mode. And then finally comes, of course, the A sense VAI. Okay. So one of the other important things is how about the timing cycle? So how does it affect? So in the timing cycle, we all have to be careful about the concept called this refractory period. So what is the meaning of refractory period? What happens is the sensed event during this time are ignored, especially for the timing purpose. Okay? And then comes the blanking period. Fire itself is going to be switched off. And of course, no sensing is going to occur. So two important things. Let's not get confused. As I said, it refractory period. That whatever sensing is happening, sensing is at least happening, okay? So, and it is going to be ignored. But blanking is like completely sensing uh, amplifier itself is off, okay? So what happens about the maximum tracking rate, especially in the dual chamber? So in that, we should try to see it is equivalent to the TARP, which is sum of AVI and the PVARP. So now, like, what the hell is uh, these uh, pacemaker timing intervals? So in this, if you try to look carefully, so the starting of the AP hmm, over here, if you look carefully, these are the atrial deflection, the ventricular deflection. So AP is for the atrial pacing, ventricular pacing, atrial pacing, ventricular pacing. And this is the basal rate interval, what is called as from the A pace to the A pace interval. Okay, this is the base rate interval. And what is the paced AV delay? Paced AV delay is the difference between the A pacing and the V pacing, as you can already notice over here. Then comes is the VA interval. VA interval refers to the difference between the V, you know, V pace 
to the okay over there and the, then of course comes the piece av delay which i already said it is the difference between the a pacing and the v pacing then comes what is called as the p var p var pins okay the uh, this is the atrial refractory period i'm going to tell so a simple question can be is what about which of these following tends to define the maximum tracking rate in the ddd mode in fact to tell you what happens is the t total atrial refractory period is the one which is the allows the uh, or defines in fact the maximum uh, tracking rate in fact in this and the reason is whatever we are coming across is like never forget one of the important uh, tools which can be pretty helpful is the magnet okay and also the chest x-ray the isometric maneuvers isometric maneuvers otherwise sometimes even exercise testing as well so what will happen is there will be patients who who will be having changing morphology especially during the exertion and whenever you try to get stuck get the experts uh, hand or help uh, for example field engineers so one of the other important factor some of the clinical conditions which we may come across is the wire fractures how do we say wire fracture so in the wire fracture the voltage threshold is going to be high okay the current threshold will be can be high or even low sometimes as well however if you come across a high lead impedance always rule it out then the next entity is the insulation break for the insulation break what happens is you may come across sometimes the voltage threshold is going to be high the current threshold may also be high as well however of course the lead impedance is not at all going to be affected so the cur current threshold and the voltage threshold will be higher then comes the lead dislodgement for the least lead dislodgement if the lead has gone so you, you might notice current threshold and the voltage threshold both of them can be higher and finally comes the exit block if there is a phenomenon called as exit block both of them the again the voltage threshold or the current threshold can be higher as well then coming to the pacemaker syndrome what is the clinical presentation for this so the clinical presentation as i had said it is uh, if uh, so what do we notice in this kind of ecg if we load notice so okay i'll try to give you a clinical scenario the patient can develop uh, or you know usually comes to us with uh, history of malaise weakness can an av if there can be chest pain cough confusion or even syncope so the problem what is happening is there is due to loss of av synchrony so what happens is the first thing is it's big spike really huge yeah so for the ventricle definitely it is pacing yeah there are some differences which you may notice in the sense so what happens is uh, the, the yeah uh, although we should be able to know that this can literally happen in the vvi or even vvir mode as well and in fact what is happening is if the av synchrony is lost of course this is the time when this is going to happen so question time for everyone isn't it so what is uh, this uh, uh, i would say patient comes you know complaining of dizziness so when he was driving his car uh, to the he was going towards his car and then he noticed like oh 
oh my gosh, I'm having a little bit of dizziness. And uh, okay, so the, uh, rhythm strip is obtained when the treadmill exercise test is being done. And the device parameters, when you try to interrogate, you could see that it's a triple D mode. There's a mode switch detection rate at 175 beats per minute with upper rate limit of 150 beats per minute, yeah? The PVRP is 400 milliseconds. So what do you think? What is it due to mode switching? Rate rate drop response, rate smoothing, base they can use two is to one block or something else. So for this, if we try to look carefully, we can try to, we can see the maximum tracking rate is 100 beats per minute. As I had already said it, the TRP is the AVI plus PVRP, okay? So which is 600 milliseconds, isn't it? As I had said, it. so how do we calculate the TRP, the tracking rate? So we need to add up the AVI and the PVRP, which is 600 milliseconds. <coughs> Sorry. So what happens with the other thing, what we notice is when there's a spontaneous P wave rate, which is exceeding the maximum tracking rate of 100 volts within the PVRP and is not responding. And that is why we notice it's like a Sorry, <coughs> sorry. Two is to one block. Doesn't it look like is like a two is to one block over here? And then mode switching is of course not present because if the H rate doesn't exceed more than one seventy five beats per minute, in addition, the PV intervals are the same during slower V pacing, suggesting VVI pacing is not present, isn't it? Then what else do we notice? What about the rate drop response? So rate drop response is also not present. Why? Because in this because this feature will require an abrupt drop in the spontaneous P wave rate for the activation. Yes, uh, there's some responses. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. I'm already coming across some interesting responses. Wonderful, I'm great. Mathlesh Sanhita Shivam Tuma. Okay, then what is happening is, uh, as I said, it rate response report is rate drop response is not present because the feature itself will require an abrupt drop in the spontaneous P wave uh, rate for the activation. And then finally comes the rate smoothing. Rate smoothing as well is not present. And why is that? Because in the strip, you can't see any abrupt reduction in the paced ventricular rate rather than a smooth one, isn't it? So that's why what happens in the pacemaker mediated tachycardia. So you will be noticing this kind of recording which will be there if you try to you know, the surface ECG is like this. Then you try to do get the atrial EGM, the ventricular EGM recording and all, and then you like do uh, get a recording like this. So if you will notice over here, we can already notice the intracardiac markers are suggesting they are retrograde P waves, okay? But after 280 milliseconds after the ventricle ventricular pace beats in the sense. So this is the V. Hmm? Oh, this is the A, okay. So this is corresponding to the P wave over here. Corresponding to the P wave, P wave, P wave, P wave, P wave over there, yeah. 
how about the endless loop tachycardia this is uh you try you notice it is more of a, like a uh, this functional atrial non-capture with retrograde p wave occurring in the form of pvrp so what do you notice over here this is the surface ecg and this is the v piece yeah over here so this is again is the v piece and atrial pacing as you can notice it over here isn't it atrial piece atrial piece atrial piece but when you try to look at this over here, there's a functional atrial non-capture. And that is the reason it leads to a repetitive non reentrant V asynchrony. Okay? So one of the important uh, key, especially for this clinical entity is, unlike the pacemaker mediated endless root tachycardia, here, the RNRVS doesn't occur at programmed upper rate interval at all. Okay? And this is the reason the retrograde activation of the atria occurs within the PVRP. And that's why it's not getting sensed. So what is called as the functional undersensing. And though it is not sensed by the atrial circuit, it is going to make the it will refractory to the sensed output. So there is a very interesting uh, case report. I would really like to uh, go through this one, the reference which has been given. Go through that, and I'm sure it will give you a little bit more insight as well. So what is the automatic mode switching? Automatic mode switching, it tends to switch off the atrial tracking in the presence of intrinsic atrial activity. And what, what is that? What is happening over there? In the presence of uh, intrinsic atrial activity uh, above a programmable limit. So what is going to happen is uh, there is the atrial rate cutoff. And that is the one which will stop the rapid ventricular pacing in response to the high rate atria. So for example, if there's atrial fibrillation episodes, which is going on. So if uh, atrial fibrillation, so which can cause fast ventricular rate, but if you're having an automatic mode switching, it is going to stop the uh, ventricular pacing, of course. Yeah, so that's a really smart function. And as I had said it as well, it is very important and very helpful for a lot of those patients. So it will be good enough or uh, important to be able to accommodate the patient's lifestyle and also the activity level. Okay, and if someone is having a sinus tachycardia as well, it can be really, really helpful. So what do we notice in this patient? So in this, if the automatic mode switching wouldn't be there, all the P waves would be followed by a QRS. That would that would be like disastrous, especially for the patient. So that's why automatic mode switching can really be helpful for, as I said, it uh, for the patient, and uh, it is really a very uh, <laughs> transitions. Okay, and it's really it is good a patient friendly feature i would say now come to the hysteresis so what is happening in hysteresis so in hysteresis programming of the hysteresis tends to permit the prolongation of the first pacemaker escape interval after sensed event so the pacemaker senses the event and it will try to it will allow for the prolongation of the first pacemaker escape interval so as I said, okay, for example, if there's a pacemaker, which is programmed at a cycle length of like 60 beats per minute, it goes in cycle length of 1000 milliseconds. And then there's a history of 1200 milliseconds. Okay. So it will allow like uh, 200 milliseconds more, for example, for another sensed uh, QRS complex. So a lot of times uh, the, uh, 
you will have come across in pacemakers and all uh, if if the qrs is of course not getting recognized then the pacemaker will continuously keep on stimulating the heart rate at the baseline uh, uh, program rate and there will be a skip interval of 1000 milliseconds as well unless and until uh, event restarts the cycle and one of the important things, especially in a single chamber pacing is because it is able to maintain the spontaneous AV synchrony as long as possible. So what is happening in this ECG recording, if you'll try to look carefully? The first few beats are doing good, but later on, some problems are happening in the sense PQRS there's already a deflection. Before that, then there's a ventricular pacing again, followed by, of course, over here. So what is the problem over here? So what is happening is, um, yeah, the lower rate was of pacing was 100 beats per minute, and the hysteresis was kept at 65 beats per minute. So then what happens is, if the lower rate is greater than the hysteresis rate, the pacing is inhibited. And until the rate falls below the hysteresis rate as well. Okay. Now one other interesting question. So what is happening in this? So an old lady, 68 year old, a VVI pacing system has been kept during the aortic valve replacement. Okay. And the tracing shows simultaneously recorded leads one and two. You can see the recording from the lead one and two. Now, the tracing most clearly demonstrates what? Which of the five? Okay. Just look at the ECG. What do you notice in the lead two? Don't you think it is atrial flutter? They are flutter waves, isn't it? So this is a normal VVI function. Then, what is the other thing if you notice? In lead one, if it is positive, this is left bundle or right bundle? This is left bundle. Isn't it? One is positive. So this is like the left bundle. Okay. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven beats are here. Okay, total seven, six, five. So in the fifth beat, what do you notice? Is this a normal beat? No. So what is it? It's a Beat, what do we notice? In fact, if we look carefully, it is exclusively seems like based from the epicardial LV lead. That's the reason you are having a right bundle branch block morphology. So this is left bundle and this is the right bundle morphology. So this is based from the epicardial LV lead. Okay. Then you also notice the VVT with intermittent under sensing too difficult to rule it out because if you don't do a device integration, but still I would say less chances for that. So one of the important things to be able to understand is what are the reasons or conditions when this failure to pace? So in the failure to pace can happen for battery failure, circuit failure, the lead fracture, internal insulation problem, or the oversensing, or even the loose uh, screw set, or even phenomenon of a crosstalk as well. So I'll try to give you an example of, are you aware, aware what is 10C unit? Or who uses the tense unit? 
So a lot of times you'll come across this, uh, the physiotherapists uh, tend to use those TENS units in which they try to give electrical stimulation to the different areas of the body and especially for the pain. So what is happening early with TENS on and TENS off? So at least what we see is the testing does not show any inhibition. Absolutely working good. Okay. Then comes the phenomenon of crosstalk. So what happens is um, is actually due to the lack of anodal circuit contact, due to which all the electricity tends to travel in the circuit in circle from anode to the cathode. That is the positive pole to a negative pole. Due to which a lot of times there can be pseudo malfunction and the most commonly the atrial output which is sensed by the ventricle and resetting the VAI. So again, let's try to see this example, what is happening. So this is a DDI, okay with uh, a rate of like 86 and AVI is around 165 milliseconds with blanking period of 13 milliseconds. And it has been referred to you for abnormal pacemaker function. What will you do? Hmm. Anyone? We have 35 participants today. So some of the basic informations which we already have is how much rate it is programmed to, how much, you know, is the blanking period as well. V beats are intrinsic, 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 intrinsic. Okay. And the rate is almost around 100 beats per minute. Why is it one, two, three, three boxes, big boxes? One, two, three, three big boxes are there. Then, what else do we notice? When we try to measure the VV interval, we can notice over here is 575 milliseconds. Yeah? So, if we try to calculate the VV interval, as I had already showed it in the previous diagrams, VV interval is the AV plus VA, so which comes like 532 milliseconds, okay? Although, which is longer than what we see on the strip over here. So, ideally, a blank period of more than 43 milliseconds should avoid the crosstalk. And that's why what can be done is decrease the atrial stimulus if there's adequate safety margin, otherwise decrease the ventricular sensitivity, okay? So which is going to be helpful, especially for the crosstalk uh, safety pacing. I, okay, uh, I can understand it's not easy uh, to understand in, you know, on the first instance. Let me try to give you some example. So this is again, on a, this is not my case, I would say, uh, let me tell you very frankly, if you go through this reference, this is a wonderful case report in the heart to room, actually. If you go through this really very beautiful image, uh, which you all can come across. So what is happening is the ECG is able to show that the atrial pacing is coinciding with the intrinsic ventricular rhythm and retrograde P waves, especially in the alternate beats without pacing stimuli. And when we we can also notice this, the ventricular safety pacing in the alternate beats with atrial pacing, okay? And following the atrial pacing, the pace is designed to trigger a ventricular pacing output if the ventricular sensing occurs during the first portion, 
which is like the 110 milliseconds of the programmed AV interval. And yes, sometimes it can be, of course, difficult to determine whether you know these uh, they are representing a VSP or VSR, a uh, ventricular safety pacing, or is it a ventricular sense response? In fact, so that's why uh, if uh, if both are allowed. So what about crosstalk? If you come across the ECG like this, what do you notice first? Atrial capture is doing well, isn't it? However, the ventricular capture, if you'll notice, there are two bits of functional loss of capture. Do you notice it? Do you notice it? Two beats. But the sensing, how about the ventricle sensing? Is it, it is almost unknown. And then you also notice a pseudo fusion beat, which is causing the crosstalk, in fact, especially with the ventricular safety standby scene. So you did a chest x ray. And on the chest x ray, you notice this. This. What is it? Hmm? What do you notice? This failure to pace over here due to lead fracture or pseudo fracture as well. So then you try to integrate the device, and then you notice this patient is, of course, oh. Not at all pacing dependent. So a lot of conditions can cause loss of capture, I would say, due to dislodgement, fracture, the uh, screw set is loose, there's an exit block or perforation, or if there's an air in the pocket, okay? Or sometimes even uh, secondary to drugs as well, some medications as well. Now, what is happening in this ECG? Sixty-four year old female patient comes to you for device check. Got the extra done. Ooh. Okay. This patient has been admitted with syncope and tachybrady. So Dual chamber pacemaker was done on the right side as the patient is a right handed and you know goes for hunting and all. But recently, after one week follow up, the patient, uh, you know, the patient is telling, like, oh, um, you know, the reports wise, it seemed to be pretty fine, but okay, don't worry, uh, assurance was done, you should live with it and all but the patient calls up the cardiologist, okay? And he also says the same thing, like, you know, the doctor has said it, uh, like, you should live with it. And then, with the chest x-ray, this one. What is happening is, I'll try to give you some more hints as well. So that's why, so what I mean is, especially when you're trying to, so sometimes like it may seem everything may look normal on the chest x-ray, but when you try to take a different view of the chest x-ray, then you will be noticing a lot of other things. And why is that? So that's why what I mean is sometimes uh, people think that, oh, Perforation may not have happened. Okay, if perforation happened, of course, the, someone will, the patient will be dead. But what happens is, you should also try to interrogate the device, the interrogation, the parameters of the pacing. So this is that guy who was having a cardiac perforation. And what was actually noticed is loss of RV capture. So a lot of times it may seem pretty normal, but 
This is another example of perforation. Yeah. So what are the signs of the RV perforation? You should try to look at the morphology, the configuration of the bundle branch block, and if there's any friction rub, especially after the implant, if there's pericarditis, effusion, or even tamponade as well. So what is happening on this one? Dual chamber pacemaker implanted. And then, so there, are, is it sensing or pacing? Well, good enough. So what happens is there are different algorithms uh, in which they, for the atrial sensing and pacing and also for the single backup pace or, you know, the switch modes and all. It should be always be discussed and gone through in the details. And that is where comes the phenomenon of oversensing. So as I had said it, in cases of lead fracture, there will be increased impedance. In cases of insulation defect, there will be decreased impedance, okay? And electromagnetic interference can also happen. And sometimes the diaphragmatic potentials from the integrated bipolar leads can be there as well, which can happen. So this is a uh, patient, what will happen is, what has been happening in this one? So what had happened? <laughs> It has, as you already noticed, it like it has a very interesting history. Is um, so there was an accidental flood in the basement of this gentleman's house, and uh, <clears throat> and he went to the flooded segment with the socks itself, and that's why, as you may notice it over here, there's noise actually on the atrial and ventricular levels. In fact. And then this gentleman got into trouble, wasn't it? So this is another 13 year old um, family friend who was shocked at the YMC, Young Men's Christian Association. So what has been happening over there? If we'll try to, this is the plot, but if we'll try to look carefully later on, this T wave over sensing. So not just over-sensing, even under-sensing can be there. And under-sensing, how you try to see it for is lead insulation failure, if there's magnet uh, application, or if there's, you know, intrinsic complex uh, has changed as well. So always try to look out for if <clears throat> the normal atrial capture, for example, with one beat, showing the functional loss of the Atal capture, and if there's any under sensing as well. So for the sake of time, we will try to stop over here, but I promise in the next session, we will try to cover the remaining ones, okay? So uh, I'm sure you, if you are ha having some doubts and all, keep the doubts with you. And as I said it, in the next session, in the next week itself, we will try to cover them all. Okay? So I wish everyone a wonderful day and take care. Thank you so much, sir. Hello. Uh, students, your feedback poll is running in the session. Please provide your feedback.